funny how much your passions can change your life. My love of running has influenced many decisions over the last seven years, and some of them seemingly insignificant decisions, like leaving a party early so I'm fresh for training the next day, waking up extra early to get a run in before work, or my habit of grabbing my running gear and packing it anytime I travel. But other decisions are probably far more impactful, like moving to a city in the countryside where I've got access to beautiful trails and where there is a big running community. And over time, all these small and large decisions have completely reshaped probably every aspect of my life to an extent, like the changing of friendship groups, of goals, of experiences. And sometimes these decisions take you down pretty unexpected paths, like, if it wasn't for running, it's very unlikely I would have fallen in love with filmmaking. And if it wasn't for running Brighton Marathon six years ago, it's very, very unlikely that I would have been making YouTube videos. And like the moment I ran my first marathon six years ago, I turned around to my family and said, I am never doing that again. But it took two, three weeks for me to change my mind. And so I wanna talk a bit about how running has influenced my life and the big areas where I think running has fundamentally changed my life. And if you were to ask me what my favorite pastime was in 2016, what I did for fun, I would have said drinking, going out with friends and getting hammered. And I loved it. Like, give me a few beers and I'll have a childish grin on my face and I'll just go out and have the best time. But when I started running, I quickly realized that those big heavy drinking sessions had a real big impact on my stomach. And like I had a lot of issues with my stomach when I started running. And after a big night out, it would take me three or four days for my stomach to start getting normal on runs. Um, sometimes it would be a week before my stomach settled down. And so as running became more important in my life, as I became more passionate about running and started enjoying running more, uh, and, and almost came a bit more ambitious about my running, I started to prioritize drinking less. I started to avoid big, heavy drinking sessions. And like, I'll still drink when I'm in social situations, but the big, heavy drinking sessions have become far, far less frequent. And now it's got to the point where I'm quite happy that if I'm in a social situation with work colleagues, I'm quite happy to just drink non-alcoholic beer. And like, this shift has been pretty gradual. Like, for the first few years of running, I was still going out drinking a lot, but it's got to the point now where I might go one or two months without drinking. And I wouldn't say it was like an active decision either, like it's something that's just happened gradually over time as I've come to prioritize running over, over drinking. But reducing the amount of alcohol I drank didn't completely solve all of my issues with my stomach. Um, and there were definitely other factors. And the big one was my diet. And like before I started running, I wasn't wildly unhealthy. I had a relatively healthy diet, but I came to realize that there were certain things in my diet that were having a big impact on my running. And this was a lot of trial and error experimentation to find the things that were impacting my stomach. And the first big one was coffee. I used to be a big, big coffee drinker, five or six cups of coffee a day. And I quickly came to realize that that was a big factor in terms of my stomach issues going out running. And as soon as I cut out coffee, it made a massive, massive difference. And I still miss it. like. Still smells great, but I haven't had a cup of coffee now in years. Yeah, it, w it wasn't the easiest one to cut out, but, but it made a massive difference cutting it out. And so this experimentation with foods went on for years, but I realized certain things like really acidic food had a really big impact on my stomach and just certain food types, things like pizza, which I'm never gonna give up, but I know pizza has a big impact on my stomach when I'm running. And now I approach my diet so differently. My diet used to be about, you know, making sure I eat relatively healthy. And now I'm changing my diet specifically to ensure that I'm getting what I need for running. And that's not necessarily all about weight loss. There's no way I would care this much about my diet if it wasn't for running. And another thing that has changed massively is my daily routine, my weekly routine. Last week I decided to take a day off. I felt like I needed it. I was tired, exhausted from the training. There was very lot of fatigue. So I thought, right, I'm going to take a day off from running. And I looked back at my diary, my training diary, and I realized I'd gone over two months without a day off. And like, this wasn't planned. It's just, I got into a real good routine of getting out running once or twice a day. And I was running my weekly schedule of training. And because I've been taking easier recovery weeks, 
I've not needed to take a full day off. But the only reason that's happened is because I've built a really strong structure and routine around my training and, and my daily life. And, and the big reason why is because I noticed that as I started to put more structure and routine into my training, I started to do better from a performance perspective. I started to see improvements. So when I first started running, I had like a monthly training goal. Um, and when I moved to a weekly cycle, I found that I was getting out more regularly and, and I was building up my endurance better. And now it's got to the point now where I would always base my training around a weekly schedule of running. And when I started to do double days, I started to regularly wake up at 6 a.m. So I could go out for my run at 6.30, finish by seven, shower, have breakfast, and be ready for my work day, all before a reasonable time. So I might start work at 8, 8.30, but because I was getting up at six regularly, I was able to get 30 minutes of running done every morning. And now it's got to the point where even when I don't have a run planned in the morning, I'll wake up at six in the morning and I'll use that morning to sit down and read and have a proper breakfast and enjoy the morning before I start work. Um, and that's become like a really nice part of my day. And I'm definitely a creature of habit. So getting up at the same time, going to bed at the same time definitely suits me. Um, but I do know that if it wasn't for those early morning runs, my routine would be slowly shifting back towards a, a waking up later and going to bed later. But yeah, running definitely keeps that structure for me. One of the funny things about running is I find that the environment that you're running in has such a big impact on the enjoyment. Like being able to go out running on the trails in the summer around here is amazing. Going out running on roads is great as long as it's like a nice road for running on, it's well lit. You don't wanna be running on like busy A roads at night where, especially in bad weather. So I think running definitely is one of those things where your environment massively impacts the enjoyment of the uh, the activity. And so running has definitely shaped where I wanna live, the kind of places I wanna live. You know, living in London, I was completely spoiled. I could run all through the winter at night without head torches because it's so well lit, so much light pollution, uh, and all the streets have got street lamps. So I was definitely, that's something I definitely miss about London is about that winter running, but I really missed not having access to trails, not being able to go out running in the summer and just head out onto the trails in the uh, in the countryside. And one of the amazing things about Winchester here is there's such a big community of runners and there's at least three big running clubs in the city. So there's definitely like big sociable groups to go out running with. So yeah, it's funny, like I never thought running would be a factor in terms of where I want to live, but it definitely is. Another one is goals. Like I've always really appreciated the view that we overestimate what we can do in the short term but underestimate what we can do in the long term and my experience with running has definitely reflected that like i regularly miss my short-term goals um you know constantly trying to break my pbs and <laughs> regularly fail to do that but if i look at what i've done over the last three years in terms of running these bigger ultra marathons like i never thought i would be running 100 miles two three years ago and so like running has definitely made me think about goals differently and to think bigger uh, and think more ambitiously about my goals in running but also in life in general and it's definitely shifted my focus to being more long-term rather than short-term. Like right now, I'm not preparing for any races. I'm just currently trying to get into good shape and build up my fitness. And it's surprisingly hard not to go out and run races when you're seeing other people going out, smashing big races, breaking their PBs, um, and, and you know, having big successes in their running. But for me, I feel like having a period where I'm not preparing for a specific race, I'm just training, building up fitness, it's really good for me from a fitness perspective, but also for my love of the sport. Like there's a lot of stress when you're preparing for a big race, um, a lot of pressure. And sometimes it's nice just to have a training block where there isn't that pressure to perform, to prepare for a specific event and you can just enjoy it. So, you know, for me personally, I think it's really important for my like love of the sport to have these periods where I do not have big races. I think that's all about having that longer term goal of, right, okay, what am I working towards? And so to say the running has changed my life seems a bit cliche. Um, and I'm definitely somebody who has an aversion to like empty platitudes, but it feels crazy to think about how different my life would have been if it wasn't for running.